Hello and good evening, everybody. Hi, hello, hello. hello. All right, Hi, looks like, uh, you're all good. Yep. All right, guys, thank you for joining us tonight. So tonight we have a guest, um, Louis Lo, Lau, Lau, is it or Lo? Lau, Lau, yeah. Uh, Louis Lau. Okay, he's yeah. the head of research of Malacca Securities, and he's basically going to give us a market update on the Singapore market not malaysian market right so tonight is uh singapore tuesday so he's gonna basically share with us uh the performance of the uh, singapore market and also uh, what to expect in the singapore market if you guys can hear us and see us well can you just uh, comment yes so that uh, we can begin hello kp chin hi jetinder good evening everybody i'm not too sure hi, my voice is okay is yep, your voice is all good. Yeah, so if you can hear us, can you say yes in the comment section, okay, please? Okay, great. Uh, guys, okay, Jayinder, thank you. Surya, thank you very much. Okay, looks like we're all set to go. Okay, so basically for those who are interested in the Singapore okay. market, we have a uh, we have Louis, Louis Lau here, who's uh, the head of research for Malacca Securities, who will be sharing with us. So uh, please do stay tuned. And... Um, he is also willing to share us his presentation slides today. So I'll let you know uh, after today's session uh, where you can download the slides. All right. So let me just share my screen um, just to make a short announcement before we start. All right. So, um, and if you have any questions at all, guys, you can just type in the questions. I'll bring it up uh, whenever there's a question that needs urgent answer from Louis. I think, Louis, you're okay with me. Uh, interrupting your presentation while you're presenting, is it okay? Okay. Sure, sure, sure. And no, no issues. Uh, it's better that way. Yeah. <laughs> Make it more interactive. Lah. Yes, correct. Yeah. Okay. So, um, before we start, okay, whatever that is being shared here today is for informational and educational purposes only. It's not intended as any investment advice. So if you want to look for investment advice, please do look for a professional and licensed investment advisor. Okay, so once again, uh, please welcome our guest here today. We have Louis Lau from Malacca Securities. He's the head of research there, and he'll be sharing with us uh, the uh, the market update on Singapore, right? particularly, of course, the uh, Singapore Stock Exchange, and also look uh, for any opportunities or risks in the Singapore market. So, uh, Louis, I'll just um, hand this over to you. Okay, so Louis, Louis has actually okay, presentation uh, slide for you guys. I will share my screen right now. All right. Yeah, can you see my screen right now? Uh, it's coming up. Okay, great. Okay, yep. Okay, okay. So, uh, good evening, everyone. So, my name is Louis Lau. I'm the head of research for Malacca Securities. And uh, today, I'll be presenting to you uh, some updates about the uh, Singapore market outlook. And I think uh, this year itself, it's uh, pretty much a recovery year, uh, as a lot of people are anticipating. Um, after a very disastrous year last year, uh, 2020 was a COVID-19 year, and a lot of things have not been able to move. And uh, we have seen a very... Um, dire situation in, in uh, various parts of the economy. But actually, our stock market is still uh, up and running and uh, stronger than ever. So um, again, uh, this will be a dis disclaimer. Um, my ideas uh, on these slides are just uh, my ideas and I will not uh, giving out any recommendation by yourself. Uh, please uh, go through your um, stockbroker or anyone that is uh, having the license in the Singapore exchange. Uh, and first, uh, first of all, before I start, uh, thank you, Equity Strikers, and also the help from uh, Singapore Exchange to make this happen uh, today. Okay, so my agenda is uh, pretty much uh, very uh, normal, and I would say that uh, I will just start off with the COVID nineteen situation and where is this uh, COVID nineteen situation bring us to, and the second part of things will be low touch economy. I would I will be uh, briefly introducing about uh, this low touch economy. I uh, have seen this word. Uh, last year, and I, I'm uh, seeing a lot of uh, this kind of uh, social behaviors are happening, the change of behaviors of the consumer activities. And therefore, I think it is very important for us to understand the low-touch economy. 
and what that uh, COVID-19 has bring us uh, in terms of GDP, what is the impact and what are the expectations uh, in year 2021 and 2022. And we'll bring up the Singapore market outlook and also some strategy, the key themes about uh, what I think uh, of uh, Singapore stock exchange and some sector se sectors and also stock picks. Okay, uh, is that all right? Yeah, all looking good. We can okay. continue. Okay, great. So uh, narrative for COVID-19 is still uh, the same, but the problem is right now, uh, it actually it's not a problem, it's, it's a pretty good uh, uh, situation that we have, we are having right now. Since the start of last year, we have been hit by this COVID-19 and uh, from day to day, we have been seeing increasing cases, uh, but until the recent days, uh, it has been seeing some declining movement in terms of the uh, COVID-19 cases. And uh, this seven day moving average is a very steep decline compared to the previous uh, upward mode for COVID-19 cases. So which means that we are seeing the change in uh, the, the uh, situation here. And uh, giving, uh, given that the daily cases are on, on a downward trend, and we can also expect the daily deaths to tattoo anytime from this point onwards. So you can see that this part here is actually turning uh, downward. Okay, so that is a good sign for uh, the situation here. So until uh, 3 p.m. just now, uh, we have around uh, 104, near to 104 million uh, confirmed case and also death is near to 2.24 million uh, uh, cases. So um, I, I think uh, this would give you the, the idea that if the cases are going to decline further, then we are very hopeful that the recovery will be much greater than expected uh, this year itself. Okay, so I would pinpoint to a few, uh, I think only one that I can find. Why is there a decline in movement, uh, uh, decline in, in terms of the uh, COVID-19 cases? I think it is pretty much tied towards the vaccine. Vaccine has been seen uh, 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 being approved and being uh, 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 vaccinated, uh, the first person in uh, UK uh, since uh, 14 of October, so uh, 14 of December. So basically, since that point of time, we can actually uh, see the uh, cases has been plateauing and coming off. And if you go into the uh, uh, our world data, our world in data, COVID vaccination, or you can go to any vaccination stats tracker, you can actually find that uh, most of the places have started to uh, inject this uh, vaccine and they have hit maybe around uh, 3 to 4% in some places. And in, in, in terms of... Uh, United Kingdom has hit near towards above the uh, 10 to 15 percent. UAE has been hitting uh, around uh, 30 percent, and in Israel, it has been uh, injecting uh, this vaccine into the population more than 50 percent of the population. So that is a good sign, and that could be one of the one of the factors that uh, it has contributed to uh, this uh, decline movement, decline of cases of COVID. Okay, so in Singapore itself, we have also seen that, uh, you know, uh, Prime Minister Lee Sen-Lok has also been, uh, been the first one to take this uh, vaccine. And that is a good sign that uh, the 6 million population will uh, be uh, gradually uh, being injected with this uh, vaccine. So that is uh, a good start for the year. And we can expect more hopeful recovery uh, by uh, next two quarters or so. And one of the things that I always track is uh, where is these citizens moving around? Are they... Uh, going into uh, workplaces or are they going to residential areas uh, or are they going to parks or are they going to retail malls and things like that. So based on what I've gathered from apple.com uh, and also google.com, uh, these are data that, uh, a set of data that uh, is being used uh, to track their mobility. So uh, this period is when uh, year 2020 at the start of the year before the COVID happens the base case scenario is something like this. Uh, so the movement should be uh, positive 20% and positive 60% for uh, driving and also walking and also public transport. Uh, but after the WHO has mentioned that uh, this COVID-19 is the a pandemic, it's a pandemic, health pandemic, and everything starts to decline and everything has uh, been uh, 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 get into the lockdown mode and various countries are into the lockdown mode. So this is what we have seen in the lockdown mode. So anything that I, I would presume that if anything that is falling below this level right now, it is not a good sign that uh, we are still in the lockdown mode uh, and uh, social distancing is still happening and things like that. 
uh, is, is, is not good for the recovery of uh, the economic activities. So what we can see is that uh, this is the first wave. Uh, first wave was, was uh, when there is a lockdown mode and then we see some good recovery. And then later stage, it went into lockdown mode again in UK and uh, some of the places, uh, partial lockdown and things like that. So the movements or the mobility of citizens are still in the uh, below the baseline. So that is not a so good sign, uh, not, not a, a really good sign uh, for uh, economic activities. But as long as they are gradually climbing towards the baseline here, then I would foresee that uh, everything would be uh, start to uh, return to normalcy. Okay. So in terms of Republic of Korea, South Korea itself, you can see that all this lot is below uh, this baseline uh, throughout the past one year. Why is it so? Because you might be asking why. Because they are uh, already being uh, able to combat or uh, able to uh, contain this COVID uh, so well. Uh, I would say that it is because attributed to their um, uh, this digitalization uh, over the past few years. I think um, uh, everyone that have, has went to uh, this uh, Korea itself, South Korea, you have uh, you must have noticed a lot of co uh, companies are having a lot of e-commerce, uh, and uh, that 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 has uh, that has contributed to. the digitalization uh, impact is good for over the past few years. So that has helped them contain the uh, virus so well, and then they are still uh, able to work from home and generate the economic recovery. So without going back to the baseline, they are still able to con continue with their work, or con continue with their lives, livelihood. So that is a very good sign for South Korea. Uh, for, while for Malaysia, um, since March last year, we have uh, a a very steep decline in terms of the mobility, and then it has turned. Uh, it, it has turned well uh, throughout. I think we have been containing quite well uh, before November, and then later stage we went into uh, another round of lockdowns again. Uh, until right now, our, our lockdown is being extended also. Uh, so we are still in the below the baseline. So which means that uh, economic activity might not be able to restart as uh, fast as possible. Uh, so. Coming to Singapore, you see here, you can see that there is a very, very good curve upwards and right now it is back towards the baseline. So I would say that uh, under this uh, very well contained of this COVID-19 uh, situation in Singapore, we are seeing public transport uh, adding 9% uh, above the baseline, which is good. Driving is uh, positive uh, 0%, but it's still at least it's not in the dire situation like last year, uh, March. Okay, so I, I would say that uh, in, in terms of the recovery, in terms of the mobility, in terms of the citizens that are actually moving around in the, uh, in, in the, um, in the uh, Singapore uh, country itself, it is pointing towards a recovery uh, direction. So that is a very, very good uh, potential in uh, investing in, in uh, Singapore. So coming to uh, another data, uh, mobility trends again, but we are using google.com data. And this data uh, I've compared uh, from uh, last, uh, from earlier, uh, from 24th of January versus two weeks ago. So uh, what I can see from uh, the uh, green arrows here is that, uh, okay, so for 24th of January, it is negative 24%, but it has been improving since uh, two weeks ago. And uh, workplaces has been improving as well uh, in terms of mobility. So which means that people have started to move back to workplaces and people has uh, declined in terms of mobility uh, back towards their residential area. So they, they spend less time in the residential area, but they spend time in various of other parts area, like retail, recreation, supermarket, pharmacy, parks, and so on and so forth. So in, in that sense, uh, comparing two data, I can uh, expect that we, uh, we, can, uh, we can see that Singapore is pointing towards uh, some, some good mobility and uh, economic activity should be recovering from this point onwards. But you also can say that uh, this is just maybe just two weeks of data. It is not long enough. But at least we can use uh, slightly longer term data such as this to give us an understanding. We are, uh, Singapore are heading towards the baseline and likely to generate a, a, a more multiplier effect in terms of uh, this into the economic activities. Okay, so I want to touch a bit about the low touch economy. So the COVID-19 has started since last year. So what has happened is all, all the things that we have learned before the pan health pandemic, we have to relearn. 
such as we have to go through uh, you know uh, face masks uh, everywhere we go and we have to uh, wash our hands more than often uh, more than last time the frequency has been higher so we maybe dine in uh, to the restaurant less and lesser but we have a uh, uh, grab delivery or we have this uh, food takeaways and things like that so this will contribute to a new norm uh, the new norm is the social social uh, behaviors are different so like uh, for for example what is the lte impact okay low, uh, low touch economy uh, impact is that if we use to visit a restaurant uh, very often last time, maybe we right now we might not be able to visit them, but we only can take uh, uh, take away, and we might you know uh, consume less alcohol and things like that. So the chain effect is that is that maybe it will uh, dampen the economy uh, recovery or certain part of the economic uh, activities will be uh, will be uh, banished or vanish uh, sooner and sooner. So that is why uh, I, I would think that as long as uh, this uh, this, this COVID-19 is not um, resolving anytime in the near future. We are still going through the SOPs of face masks and wash more hands, uh, wash your hands more, more often. And then uh, maybe um, there is no uh, travel uh, in the near future, but unless they, they can open up some, uh, you know, um, travel bubbles in the future, then we can only travel. So all these will contribute to a new norm. And then uh, we can we can see that there are a lot of opening, open up of new economic activities, but also slow down in terms of the uh, activities, economic activities, such as the um, aviation and travel uh, are slowing down, but we can see some recovery, but it's not as vibrant as before. Um, what I've heard is that uh, in, in uh, Singapore itself, there are 6 million of population. Normally, under the normal times, there are 18 million tourists coming in. So right now, uh, it is not able to hit that, that kind of level, not even 6 million of uh, tourists coming into uh, in, into uh, Singapore. So I guess uh, those are the parts that is going to, uh, on, is undergoing a declining mode in terms of economic activities. But where, where else can we see opportunity under this scenario? So that is, uh, this low touch economy is the part that we have to really um, uh, detail in and see what are the uh, next impact that is uh, coming into the economy. Uh, so uh, we also understand that uh, throughout this period of time under COVID environment, we can't really go uh, to the office as often as before. So the work from home status seems like the norm right now. So even myself, I've been working from home uh, two thirds of the year since uh, since last year. So it's a it's a uh, it's a miracle that uh, one person can you know stay in a point for so long and you know uh, it is unable to go out and still survive through this this period of time. Okay. So uh, it's, it's becoming like a new sorry, uh, Louis. It's becoming like a new norm, right? Uh, working from home. I think companies are also adjusting to people working from home, uh, especially in Malaysia, because Malaysia is very known for especially all the old companies. They are, you need to clock in uh, yes. and then clock out, right? But now I think they are more uh, they're more agile. Yeah. Um, another question, Louis. Uh, is there yes. any form of lockdown in Singapore or there's in in Malaysia right now? Singapore or Malaysia? Uh, Singapore, Singapore. Singapore, I guess, uh, is uh, opening up, right, in, in terms of the economy. So um, right now, uh, it is, the travel borders are still partial. I guess they are uh, still maintaining the uh, as, uh, maintaining the uh, previous uh, SOP right now. Uh, still uh, not not really able to uh, travel so often. But for business purposes, for those uh, you are still able to travel. But for tra leisure purposes, leisure purposes, you need to. Uh, I think quarantine for uh, two rounds. One is uh, when you are reaching there and coming back, you are you, are, you need to have all this uh, SOP, uh, all these uh, procedures. So I guess um, uh, the situation for aviation and also travel is really in a dire situation. Uh, but I would I would I would say that uh, we can see a hopeful recovery as long as the vaccine is uh, effective enough. And secondly, the cases of COVID is declining. So. Uh, as I have mentioned earlier on, uh, the COVID cases has been uh, on the declining path over the past, I think, 7 to uh, 14 days. So that could be a sign because of the vaccine kicking in and therefore we have seen this uh, impact. So I think uh, for recovery play, it's very important uh, that we, we can actually expect, uh, I think, uh, in the next uh, few quarters, once uh, most of the people hitting around 20, uh, I think 20% 20 of the population to 20 25 percent of population being uh, vaccinated then they will start to uh, uplift the ban uh, for maybe initiating some travel bubbles and things like that 
Mm. So right now, there's no problem Singaporeans traveling within Singapore. They can just go out and go to office or go and visit people and, and, and so on. All yes, but, but, but with, a, with a limit, I think there is a limit of 8 person uh, and also uh, every day, you can only visit like 2 to 3 uh, uh, families and, and things like that. So that is a, huh. that is the SOP they have set uh, for the Chinese New Year activity. So I, I would assume that it is uh, pretty much similar uh, for now, I think that there are still some cases being, uh, you know, pop up in in, uh, in Singapore around two digits per day. But I think it is quite uh, minimal compared to uh, uh, various other uh, countries, other other countries. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. So I shall continue. Uh, yep. Yeah, that please. Thank you. Okay. So uh, in in terms of. Uh, uh, COVID-19 impact towards the uh, GDP, definitely you can see that this column 2020, um, it's uh, uh, negative for most of the countries uh, and most part of the world is negative, uh, except for China. So I would link, uh, if you are able to combat the COVID-19 more effectively than others, then you are able to recover as uh, greater than expected uh, uh, in, in 2021 and even 2022. So uh, for this uh, this webinar itself, I'm sharing just uh, for Singapore from from a Singaporean perspective or Singapore exchange perspective, and also I would also pinpoint to some recovery in China is very spectacular. If you are uh, looking into Malaysia's company or Malaysian company and also Singaporean company or listed in uh, uh, a China company listed in uh, various uh, parts of the world, they are actually making good progress in terms of the recovery. So I would expect that I would expect that. If you want to invest in some of the uh, stronger recovery plays, China would be uh, China proxies would be one of the uh, one of the seg segment that you can actually look up for. And to also uh, mention about the um, Singapore uh, Singapore government has already uh, has already committed close to close to uh, hundred uh, Singapore dollar billion billion dollar uh, to support uh, measures or uh, to deal with the COVID nineteen uh, last year. So that is a very good uh, initiative. Uh, I think. Many countries will, will deal with that because they are afraid that if they don't support the economy and the, uh, the economy will collapse and it will be a more impact, it, it will be a, a more negative impact uh, if they don't support it compared to the, if they don't support it. So I think uh, it is a, 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 a very good package, I think, uh, from Singapore to uh, to support uh, all these uh, uh, unprecedented crisis in uh, year 2020. And that would help. That would um that would see some good rebound in twenty twenty one, okay. So uh, the idea behind all this uh, market outlook this year is to expect the the gradual uh, business resumption in various parts of the economic activities, especially if they are not having external uh the, the, the external active economic activities are not as great. They can still depend on the uh, local domestic uh, domestic funds such as the construction sector and uh, things like that or consumer sectors. Uh, consumer sectors is a very, very res resilient uh, resilient part uh, because of change of consumer behaviors. People uh, are not spending so much in terms of travel, but they spend more to pamper themselves. So maybe they are buying uh, better uh, furniture or better beddings, better, better workstation and things like that. that so that are the, some of the change of behaviors that uh, people have been, uh, uh, have been changing. And that is where we have target. Um, then our expectation of the travel borders being up uplifted, I think based on the COVID-19 cases that has been uh, declining uh, in the de declining trend over the past uh, two weeks, uh, we can actually expect some uh, places to be uh, uh, to come out to become green zone and uh, that would contribute to the uh, travel bubbles, uh, initiation of tra uh, travel bubbles uh, in various countries. So we just have to wait for that to happen. Uh, so decent growth expectation in China, just like I mentioned, uh, the 8.4%. So this is 8.4%. It's a very, very spectacular growth that we can tap along with. And uh, digitalization on a fast track because of uh, this situation, most of the corporates have been going e-commerce uh, e online. And uh, this has been changing uh, people uh, spend uh, online as well. You can see the numbers uh, for, uh, for uh, double 11 and double 12 last year is so um, uh, uh, is in a very record, uh, in a, a record high position. So you can see that people spend more time online and online shopping. So that digitalization effect uh, can also be one of the segments that you can actually tackle in the technology sector. Um, and I, I would also pinpoint to the liquidity rush 
uh, by the uh, entrance of retailers. Um, last year itself, I think there are a lot of lockdowns in various countries, uh, a lot of uh, places you can't go gambling in, uh, in, in Genting and things like that. So people have uh, more money to spend. They um, Maybe they are you know investing in the stock market. So you can see a lot of entrance of retailers that uh, has been rushing into uh, the small cap and mid caps in, in Malaysia and also various countries. I think Singapore itself also has been seeing a, a good number of retailers coming up. So I believe that those retailers that have made money or those retailers have more knowledge about stock market, they will continue to invest in the stock market or they will find ideas in the stock market uh, in year 2021 and uh, moving forward. I think recently also there is, uh, you know, all this Wall Street related uh, forum has been quite actively uh, uh, popping up. So uh, I think that is also another, uh, another understanding that retailers are really putting their money into where uh, they, they think they can generate uh, more wealth, okay? So I think uh, that is a, a good sign in terms of the uh, liquidity and also velocity, trading velocity in the stock market. That is very, very crucial for uh, traders, okay? And another one, another point is that the positive rebound on commodities such as brand oil, crude palm oil, and various metals, that would also contribute to companies that are related to, you know, all these commodities will benefit out of, uh, you know, tra uh, trading of the brand oil or, uh, trading of the uh, crude palm oil. So uh, later on, we touch a little bit uh, on that uh, sectors. Okay. So uh, I would go through some of the global indices. Uh, where is uh, trade times index standing compared to the rest of the uh, compared to the rest of the uh, countries out there? Uh, Kospi, uh, we because we are just uh, focusing on, on a few. Uh, we, we are we are seeing some of the uh, better ones. Uh, Kospi, Shanghai Composite Index, uh, Dow Jones, uh, FBM, KLCI, and uh, Straits Times Index is still uh, one year uh, still in the negative uh, territory uh, compared to last uh, year uh, year on year basis. Uh, but I would assume that uh, this is because they don't have um, a lot of a uh, lot of because uh, KLCI has been supported very well by the glove counters. But because uh, three times index, uh, most of the 30 counters in the uh, three times index, it is related to REITs and also uh, the uh, real estate related uh, counters. So that's why it is not as uh, as strong as uh, what we can see. But uh, we are not really investing into just the 30 counters, but we are investing in the various range of uh, sectors later on we'll talk, talk about. So that's why I, I can see that uh, we can we need not to just focus on trade times index, but we can also focus on what is the uh, outperformers and key laggards in the stock market that we can actually focus on. So in a uh, year year on year basis, uh, on a full year basis, the uh, uh, China index has been uh, the key leader, one of the key leaders, uh, and basic materials has been uh, also in the uh, strong position. Consumer goods index has been strong. So I think these are the three that you can actually focus on because the strong will get will, will be stronger. Uh, there, is, there is always a saying that you know that they might be too big to fail, and under this uh, situation, they can still grow, which means that they are still very solid in terms of their performance or in, in terms of their earnings itself. So the key laggards is oil and gas, uh, telco, and consumer services. So I think consumer services are more related to those um, services uh, providers such as uh, you know all this uh, tourism uh, related and aviation. So those are the ones that is uh, being on decline mode. So you can actually focus on uh, this kind of method to uh to pinpoint to where you want to uh you want to put your money into uh investment uh okay so i would also emphasize on the uh, trading activities uh that we have seen so far in, uh, last year and uh, compared to 2019 what is the position for retailers and also net uh, institutional um position so um trading participation in uh, 2019 was uh, quite negative uh, for both retailers and institutional. I guess the one that is uh, buying into um, uh, Singapore exchange is the ones that is uh, foreigners. Foreigners are buying up. But the, the, the tone has changed in 2020. So in 2020 itself, you can see that the net retailer position has been up by 8.03 uh, 8 billion in 2020. And for institution, they are quite afraid of uh, the COVID-19 situation. Therefore, their net uh, position was negative, so which means an outflow uh, from uh, for uh, for twenty twenty for the uh, institutional uh, trading participation. So it's five point seven nine six billion uh, outflow. Then uh, in the four four week uh, four week uh, in January itself, we can uh, see that uh, retail position are in a negative, and uh, 
the uh, institutional position are in the positive uh, 72.5 million. So I guess uh, this, this, uh, this, this will just sum up that uh, retailers are really uh, putting their money into the stock market. And uh, that is a very, very uh, good indication that um, uh, you can buy into certain sectors that is uh, favorable to this uh, trading idea, such as Singapore Exchange. I think Singapore Exchange will uh, benefit out of all this trading of velocity. Okay, so in terms of the value, let's see at the value, looking at the value here. Uh, 2019, it was just, uh, this is uh, average daily trading value and volume. So daily uh, trading, uh, it is about 1 billion uh, per day for uh, 2019. It has went up to 1.4 billion in uh, per day in uh, 2020. Right now, for the, uh, for the past four weeks, we have seen around 1.46. So there is a slight increase in terms of the daily uh, trading volume compared to the rest of the uh, last year. So uh, that is a good sign that if um, trading value and volume is continuing to be higher, that is uh, interesting. Okay. Um, okay, I want to point towards uh, what has happened last year in terms of the market valuation uh, when a lot of retailers, a lot of people have been uh, transacting in the stock market. It, it seems like it is turning to a bubble because uh, people say that, you know, uh, you are buying to uh, let's say uh, MSCI World Index, uh, it is trading at uh, 32.9 times versus 10-year average of PE of 18.8 times. So what this means is that um, throughout the past 10 years, they are only trading at 18.8 uh, times PE. Right now, they are trading at 32.9 times. Is it, uh, I mean, for fundamental per perspective, they are, they are looking very rich or lofty in terms of valuations. But... Um, this is based, basically due to a low interest rate environment, more liquidity. People have no uh, other places to put their money into. So that's why they have propped up the uh, share price towards a new valuation. So in terms of S&P uh, 500, it is at near to 30 times uh, right now versus uh, a PE of 10-year uh, PE of 18.8 times. And KLCI is uh, 21.3 times uh, versus the 10-year PE around the 17.6. And in terms of the F, uh, the Straits Times Index is also very uh, rich in valuation. It is uh, 25.5 times uh, PE right now uh, versus a 10-year PE of 12.7 times. So, so maybe you say that yeah, it is not really justifiable based on based on this uh, this this uh, PE multiple. But people still put their money into those uh, those stocks that are still uh, trending higher. So what we can understand from this situation is that when more money is put into the stock market, when more liquidity is liquidity rush rushing into the stock market. I think uh, that is the case where uh, we can see a um, lofty valuation because there, there isn't a lot of sectors that we can uh, buy into. They, they are just buying into something that is uh, uh, expensive, but at least there, there is some growth in it, okay? Such as uh, the, you know, the 30 counters are, are very expensive, but they are still willing to buy into it because they are the blue chips. So they, they believe that they are uh, unable to fail and therefore they are buying into them. So that is just uh, the uh, P multiple or fundamental uh, perspective of things. But in terms of uh, technical analysis, I want to pinpoint to a few areas here. Okay, so I think the first area is uh, around this level here, two seven eight three. What I want to pinpoint here to this point is that um, this is where the WHO has mentioned that uh, it is a pandemic and uh, a lot of uh, places around the world, uh, global indices uh, are tanking from that point. So if uh, Straits Times Index can surpass this level mean, means that market is forward looking and market is um, already expect uh, they are going out of the woods uh, from this point onwards, okay? Uh, because it is at 2902 level uh, as, as of this juncture. Um, I think this is taken on 31st of uh, January and uh, over the past two trading days, we have seen some good recovery, uh, two days of recovery in terms of STI and then why I want to pinpoint towards this uh, 3017 level is this is when they have uh, they have started with the pandemic, uh, but it is not being announced as a pandemic yet. So in order for us uh, to see uh, further upside of uh, this STI above this 3117, uh, we need to see a growth of uh, better earnings uh, towards before this level here in order to, uh, to, to expect this uh, STI to happen uh, to cross above this 3117 level. So I think uh, key points here are the earnings results that is going to come out in the next two or three quarters. Is there any good recovery in terms of uh, all these corporates in Singapore? 
are they making a good progress in terms of their earnings? If yes, then surely they are able to crop, uh, 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 surpass this 3117 moving forward. Uh, and based on the current position, once the vaccine is uh, you know going uh, in a gradual pace uh, into the population, and uh, that maybe will take another uh, two quarters or so, then moving forward, uh, what, what is an antip an, an, uh, anticipation? So if there is anticipation of better recovery in terms of economic activities, once this uh, vaccine is being injected in most of the population, then we can see uh, a good recovery. Uh, in in uh in STI towards the three one one seven, but uh, based on this uh, technical analysis point of view, it is uh, an uptrend uh, channel. So as long as it is hovering above the two seven eight three level, uh, we can see a uh, uh, a very good recovery back towards at least to retest the three one one seven level. Okay. Uh, other than that, I also want to talk about um some uh, some uh, related uh, commodities uh, such as gold. Gold, uh, I think, is quite uh. It's a quite uh, intercorrelated. I would say that uh, it has some correlation, negative correlation with the stock market when it is going up, which means that uh, th that is that is a general rule of thumb, but not uh, as not uh, always the case. But at least it is not spiking up from this point, which means that people are not holding holding on to the safe haven asset, but it's just a consolidation manner. Uh, around the uh, 1,800 towards 1,900 level. So as long as it is not spiking above this level here, we are still not uh, seeing the um, uh, the money is being flowing out uh, to from the stock market yet. Okay. Another uh, thing that we also want to pinpoint point uh, towards is the uh, brand oil. I think a lot of companies under uh, under Singapore in Singapore is also related to uh, brand oil prices or crude oil prices, and um, the crude oil prices has been uh, turning out pretty well in uh, uh, 2020 uh, after it has slumped towards the 20, uh, near towards the 20 uh, mark. It has uh, recovered back strongly towards uh, 54 and right now it's near towards uh, around the, uh, near towards the 56. And we have a positive bias view on this. I think uh, over the past two training days, uh, there have been some uh, spiking up in terms of brand oil. So we can actually anticipate some of the oil and gas counters to recover or having some trading interest in the next uh, few uh, few weeks or so. And other than that, uh, we also want to pinpoint to uh, CPO price. Uh, CPO price has been uh, went, has went up pretty well. Uh, I think that uh, has been uh, coming. Uh, the, the the catalyst for uh, CPO has been always uh, whether there's any demand in terms of uh, China or whether any demand in terms of in, uh, from India. So basically, these two. Uh, part uh, this two part of the world has actually been uh, quite well in, in terms of uh, the recovery and uh, the demand is still there and therefore you can see that uh, CPO prices has been uh, hovering very strongly from uh, the uh, near towards 2000 in uh, 2020 uh, year 2020 uh, back towards around the current position near to 3004 3300 okay so uh, CPO price has been intact so these are some of the uh, backings of the uh, data that we can actually um, uh, put into our key teams or put into our strategy because there is this kind of setup in the market and therefore it come, it boils down to what uh, key teams that we have to focus on uh, in, in uh, 2021. Okay, so uh, before I go into the key teams or strategy, uh, is there any questions? Let me get yeah, some. If you have any questions, you can just type in those questions. Right now, I think they are still, um, they're still uh, listening to your presentation. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. So uh, we can I, continue first uh, because we will allow them to ask questions towards the end also. Okay. Great. So given that uh, we have all that uh, all that thematic uh, being set up for us, the macro view and things like that. So what are the key themes that we believe it will uh, generate good profits and good uh, investment ideas? Would be the uh, potentially the glove. I I still think that glove uh, has still some play after you know all these. Uh, uh, top love discussion group has been uh, popping up. I think uh, it is expediting, uh, expediting the trend to change uh, even faster towards the uptrend mode uh, for now, at least. And uh, healthcare services is also another segment that I think uh, people should actually focus on because uh, last year itself, a lot of COVID cases has happened in various parts of the world. So a lot of people are afraid that they, they are chronic diseases or they are not so urgent. Um, not so urgent uh, operations can delay until this year. But since that this year, uh, we have been seeing some of the uh, recovery 
and people will think back or uh, their operations can uh, you know uh, can, can can do it this year so i think the healthcare services in terms of the eye clinic or in terms of uh, the uh, private hospitals itself those are the ones that is will, will have some good recovery in terms of the patients uh, coming back okay so in terms of technology i think this is a key uh, event for the year uh, and for the next i think three to four years uh, this will be uh, the key sector that you should be uh, tapping along with because of the digitalization has been expedited by the COVID-19 situation. Um, the digitalization transformation has been seen uh, vastly in many, many, many uh, sectors. So I think uh, that is the part, that is the key element uh, towards the technology uh, investment uh, catalyst. And also um, during this period, we are in the work from home status. Uh, we have been uh, using a lot of Zoom and all, all, uh, all these uh, webinar services and uh, things like that. So data center is the one that is uh, uh, having a lot of demand, pen up demand. And this demand will not vanish uh, from thin air and it, it will continue to grow as long as we are using our gadgets and uh, our electronic gadgets and Moving forward, we, we, we can expect more of these webinars or online uh, courses to be in. So the data center, 5G, um, the electric vehicle, all these are going to pinpoint towards a better direction or at least for the next three to five years, we have still something to hang on to for technology sectors. And if you think about the broader picture of technology, I am uh, very uh, positive on uh, technology, although people will say that it is a bubble, but I will say that as long as um, technology sector Oh, as long as human beings are able to continue to uh, research about the technology, uh, technological advancement. So I, I believe that from now until the next 100 years or 200 years, human beings will still continue to research R&D and then uh, the technology forefront will still be a very, very, um, you know, um, uh, not, it's not a sunset industry. Uh, it's, it's, it's just the start of the new uh, super cycle. That is what I think about the ex, uh, technology uh, sector. Okay, uh, AI, automation, machine learning, all these are con going, going to contribute towards a better R&D in the future. Okay, so um, then the next key team that I want to focus is the training activities uh, that has been uh, very, very uh, strong, uh, very uh, firm in from, from the uh, retailers or the investors that would also bring up some trading activities uh, counters uh, trading uh, counters such as uh, Singapore Exchange or maybe IFAS or maybe some brokers out there. Okay, domestic consumption remain resilient. I think everyone would have heard about this. Uh, this company called Sheng Xiong. Sheng Xiong has been uh, giving out a very very strong uh, bonus to their uh, employees uh, employees. And that is uh, that is a good sign because if they can pay bonus, means that they are making good growth uh, last year. And being in the essential item or essential sector, uh, it is it, people will spend more on food. Okay, people can't travel. People pamper themselves with better quality of food. Um, the, people will buy more stuff at home and things like that. So uh, that is a, a strong uh, sector. I would say that it is a recession-proof sector uh, consumption. And the next one is the plantation earnings to remain solid and uh, also riding the China wave. China wave is um, related to the uh, Made in China 2025. You can search in Google uh, 2025 Made in China. Uh, there is a team for that. And a lot of people are having a direction of uh, from China. Uh, there are more job orders that will be coming out or companies that has been diversifying into China has made some good progress and they have been uh, making great earnings uh, year by year. Okay, so these are some of the sectors and topics uh, for uh, this webinar session. Um, I will also provide the financial data for for all these com uh, companies, but I will just pinpoint to some of the better looking chart uh, for uh, trading purposes or investing purposes uh, for the time being. So uh, my uh, time frame for for all these uh, are based uh, uh, the fundamental picks. Uh, the stack sector and stock picks are for a longer period, but you have to uh, know your entry and exit point uh, based on technical analysis. So I just can uh, let you, uh, I just can guide you on the, the, the broader market and also the sectors to pick on. 
and then we will uh, go in from uh, from that point onwards. Okay, so uh, let's see uh, healthcare. We have Top Love, Riverstone, UG Healthcare, MedPax International, uh, Singapore Medical Group. So most of these are healthcare related. Uh, these are related to uh, glove counters. These are uh, glove glove products. Uh, these are this is related to uh, the private hospital that I mentioned. So last year itself, maybe a lot of people cannot go to do uh, their operations. Uh, so right now, uh, since that uh, it is a better environment for, for the time being, so they might get their operations done this year. So Singapore Medical Group should have some uh, delayed uh, patients coming back this year and, uh, uh, and also new patients coming in. So this year versus last year itself, I think definitely the earnings will be year on year higher and Q on Q higher. Okay, so uh, some resilient team, consumer and stock markets related, I think, uh, Shengxiang Group, uh, Jack Farr, uh, Limited, uh, Thai Beverage. So these are the resilient consumer teams. Okay. So under the rich sector, uh, we can also have uh, Capital DC, Maple Tree Industrial. So these are related to high tech, uh, data center, industrial park, and related. So, uh, Sun Tech Read and R logos are not really so high tech uh, kind of uh, reads, but um, they are. Uh, having higher yields, okay, higher yields in terms of the investment uh, dividend yield. So I would, uh, if you ask me, uh, which part of the, uh, which part of REITs are good? I think generally all the REITs are good as long as they are not involved, not involved in retail malls. Because during this period of time, um, people are, are lacking the uh, the drive to uh, go into a retail malls. I would also spend my time more at home and things like that. So retail malls. Um, unlikely to be one of the uh, beneficiary uh, under the risk sector. But uh, in terms of the beneficiary uh, sec uh, smaller sector, in terms of risk, I think it's the technology park, uh, industrial park, uh, the data center, uh, so IT related. So these are the A and B, Capital DC and Maple Tree Industrial is the one that is related to data, uh, data center and industrial park. Uh, SunTech Read, uh, Ara Logos is related to more towards the office and things like that, but they're having better yield. So uh, give, give and take. So if you want to have a better yield, you might want to go into SunTech Read, our logos, but if you are into the data center a point of view, uh, they are still having some good growth, then I think Capital DC and Maple Tree could be uh, one of the, uh, two of the counters that you can actually look up for. So under the plantation, uh, Golden Agri Resource, uh, Bumi Tama Agri First Resources, these are related to plantation. I think it's quite similar to Malaysia's uh, Malaysia sector, uh, plantation sector. So we are anticipating that um, the crude palm oil prices has been you know trending higher. So that is why uh, the earnings is definitely will be stronger than uh, year twenty twenty, and also uh, Q and Q year on year should be higher. Okay. Um, construction and building materials. So like I said earlier on, if um, if the external factors are not really recovering as positive as what we think. Uh, so for instance, if even with the vaccine, uh, the um, all these uh, external um, catalysts out there uh, cannot, you know, boost the economic uh, activities in the in Singapore region. What else can bring up the Singapore region's economic activity? I think it boils down to the construction and building materials activities. So I would also pinpoint to uh, you know Lembang Group, uh, Sif Mac Limited, uh, BRC Asia. So these are related to construction and building material. So whenever you think of uh, domestic. Um, uh, development expenditure. So where else they can uh, generate economic activity or GDP it is coming from the construction activities. But what else can generate for the whole economy uh, to become better? The upliftment of travel borders is a must and the uh, initiation, initiating of travel bubble is a must. So if you think about that, then the recovery team will be uh, something that you want to think, uh, think about. So Singapore Airlines and SATS sets is the one that is under recovery team. So, uh, but I'm not going to put in any counters under the recovery team because the charts are not looking as decent as the rest of the uh, sectors. So I'm just pinpointing towards the recovery team, just in case you want to uh, look out for some stocks ideas. Once they have uh, uplift, uplifted the, uh, the travel borders or uh, make the travel leisure uh, even into a bigger, uh, bigger scene, and initiating a travel bubbles, and that will be the time you want to invest in the Singapore Airlines and SATS. So these are some of the ideas that you can actually uh, uh, take it out from these uh, slides uh, to put it in uh, your trading uh, investment uh, horizon. Okay, and um, 
financial related, just now we've mentioned about the very um, high liquidity rush that has been coming into stock market. So Singapore Exchange and IFAS Corp uh, will be something that you want to um, go into. I believe that IFAS Corp, uh, everyone would know about them, is Fun Super Smart. And uh, they have been uh, having a very spectacular year. Uh, since last year itself, I think uh, they have uh, went up super strong in terms of their share price. Little on, I will show you the chart. Okay, in terms of technology sector, UMS Holdings, AM Holdings. AM Holdings, I think uh, EPF is holding some of them. Uh, UMS Holdings, some of the uh, fund house in, in Malaysia is also holding uh, in, in, in these two companies. So uh, these are the two companies uh, in um in listed in uh, listed in uh, Singapore, but uh, they are also having a lot of trading interest from our fund, fund houses. So I think uh, you can actually monitor. All these are related to uh, technology sectors that I think their chart-wise chart and also their earnings-wise can recover uh, better than um, uh, the uh, 20, year 2020. These are all based on uh, the forecast given uh, by Bloomberg. Okay. Um, China proxies, I think just now we have mentioned the made in, uh, made in uh, China 2025 and uh, the China proxies is a strong, decent catalyst because of, of their recovery uh, this year will be around roughly uh, 8% based on the world consensus, uh, the, the Bloomberg consensus. So these are some of the names. I, I think that uh, Nano Firm, uh, Sun Power, uh, Valuetronics, these are some of the companies that I think it is very decent in, in terms of their uh, performance over the past uh, couple of years and uh, they are still uh, I think uh, in terms of share price I think there's still some room to grow okay so these are some of the financial data that I will uh, I will uh, pass it down to you all uh, in the slides uh, but these are all based on the Bloomberg data uh, what uh, this data is I would just uh, uh, just give you an idea of how to read this uh, table financial year and that means uh, when is uh, financial year end when is this company ended uh, their financial year? So it's uh, 08 means August, 2020 means uh, 2020. Uh, so um, so that is how you read this um, financial year end. And if financial year end has ended in 2020, which means that the first, okay, the first year, okay, this, this part of the year, uh, this column here will be reflecting the already of, um, ended financial year uh, net income. Okay. okay, these are all in terms of uh, Singapore dollar. Okay, in Singapore dollar uh, in terms of million. Okay, so uh, this is how you look at it. So current FYE means uh, in August 2020 ended year, uh, financial year, it has uh, seen uh, 583 million uh, of uh, uh, net income. So net income plus one financial year is uh, the net estimate, net income estimate by analysts for, the, uh, for 2021. Uh, FYE and also net income to FY is in terms of uh, 2022 FYE. So this is how you read this table. So this is just a uh, 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 percentage growth from uh, the previous year and so on and so forth. And uh, this is the dividend yield estimate. Okay, so uh, try to use this as um, as one of the guidance uh, from uh, Bloomberg. Okay, everything is uh, extracted out from Bloomberg, the industry segment and also the financial year. So I think this is very helpful for you all. Uh, at one glance, you know that what is uh, a very strong uh, counter, what is uh, uh, what are the expectation next few years? Are they growing or are they declining? Okay, so for for instance, Sing Xiong, uh, last, okay, uh, ended in uh, December last year. So this is reflecting, this is reflecting 2019 figure and this is uh, reflecting 2020 figure because 2020 financial and December has not ended yet. So this is the estimate, okay? Now, I think the February month will uh, come up with the result and they are estimating 130 million uh, Singapore dollar in terms of net income. And in the next uh, one year itself, uh, it will be uh, next year, uh, next following year, it will be 106 million. So that is how you read uh, this, this, uh, this, this table. So Jaffa and Thai Vibration, so all these are, all these will be given to you. And uh, I would say some turnaround, this is negative uh, declining mode uh, or, so you can actually refer to this and you know, based on based on this figure as of uh, 1st February, 2021, uh, this will give you an idea of the company. So most of these companies have people covering them. So that's why you can see estimate figure. So at least it's covering them. So there's estimate, okay? So I will just, 
okay, go through every uh, sector uh, uh, catalyst. So, uh, Benny, uh, am I taking too long or should I cut, cut it short? Yeah, um, we can still go on. Yeah, it's okay. We still have time. We still have another uh, 35 minutes to go. So, okay, great, great. Yeah. Uh, this will be very fast. I think around uh, 10 minutes will do. Okay. All right, great. Okay. So um, for each of the sector, I have also put in uh, the catalyst in that. So I would want to also pinpoint to uh, all these catalysts uh, based on the current information. If there is any changes in the next uh, two, uh, two weeks or so, then you have to uh, adapt to the market changes. So healthcare currently is still having high demand. Uh, still higher demand in terms of gloves. There is no stop in terms of the ASP. There is no stop uh, towards the cases. Although it's on declining trend in terms of COVID-19 cases, there are still cases uh, in the world uh, near to 300 to 400 uh, thousand cases in the world. So I think that is also why the demand for growth is still high. And uh, higher demand per capita in high population nations. Uh, in India and in China itself, before the uh, COVID pandemic, they are only using around four to six um, uh, four to six uh, gloves uh, per capita, and therefore that is uh, not a very, not a very high number. But given that after these COVID nineteen cases has been, you know, COVID nineteen virus has been in, uh, we, we can see that the uh, uh, higher the the per cap per capita usage will be also increasing uh, in high population nations. Okay, so many different industries also will be will be using uh, gloves moving forward. I believe that. Uh, in services industries, in hotel uh, industry, everywhere in the world, uh, every uh, industry that is face-to-face, uh, -face, uh, you know, serving clients, they are also in need of gloves as well. Other than that, we also have uh, the uh, glove ASP is also rising, so just now mentioned. So this has contributed to a very uh, healthy uh, demand and healthy ASP rising. But again, people are arguing that, you know, um, the ASP might, you know, uh, tank in 2022, so people are buying into uh, 2022 valuations. Uh, but in terms of uh, the, the facts, these are some of the facts, but uh, trading dynamics is uh, really based uh, based on market um, market players. They are buying uh, or selling. So if buyers is more than the sellers, you know, uh, the price will go up. If buyers is, uh, uh, if sellers are more than the buyers, then the price will tank. So this is just uh, from the uh, top glove presentation deck and uh, magma uh, in in 2018. So these are the, some of the key areas that you have to take note. Uh, India, Indonesia, China, just uh, below uh, ten, I think ten pair of gloves uh, per capita. So in if, in in that case, uh, the glove demand should shoot up because if um they are not into de developed nation kind of uh, per capita usage, but if you are just going to maybe 24 or even towards 50, 54 like Japan, it is uh, nine times of, uh, uh, nine, nine fold of uh, China's uh, consumption right now, uh, I mean, pre-pandemic. Uh, so that is why there is a, a very strong surge in, you know, all this uh, demand uh, over the world, okay? So in terms of uh, top love, uh, we have been seeing some good support. Uh, this is uh, in the uh, Singapore uh, exchange, uh, BVA. Um, Group capacity has okay. Some key points I will just write it here. You can actually refer to uh, much later. So it's referring to a pair of gloves uh, in uh, twenty twenty one, uh, and also uh, twenty twenty two. What is the uh, glove capacity that they are you know uh, increasing? So share price has been uh, well supported near towards the one nine nine to two two three level, and currently it is above the uh, two in, uh, uh, SMA two hundred level. So that is a good sign that uh, people are still buying into it, and um, I'm expecting the next target to be around uh, two ring sixty one. Uh, sorry, uh, two uh, Singapore dollar, okay, two two six one Singapore dollar towards two eight three, okay. Uh, so for River Stone, um, they are smaller uh, in terms of capacity. Uh, so their uh, good capacity has can uh, can be increased from twelve to thirteen point five to fifteen. So it is quite uh, quite a steady increase of uh, one point five uh, each year. So uh, so that's why uh, you can see that everyone is actually increasing in terms of uh, their glove uh, capacity, and not uh. Not one is actually stagnating, uh, stagnating their their glove capacities because they foresee that the glove demands will, will, will continue to um, go great in the next uh, couple of years. Okay, so um, for support wise on the Riverstone, it will be around one three one to one four three. I think uh, the next uh, resistance will be located near towards one seven six and one nine one. Uh, UG Healthcare, you can read about their key points here. Um, the support range is around the sixty five. 
uh, Singapore sand and uh, towards the uh, target or the uh, resistance zone, it will be around 87 towards 96 cents uh, Singapore, uh, Singapore cents uh, towards uh, this range. So I think most of the companies uh, under the global sectors are pointing towards uh, a, a stronger position because of the recent uh, trend change uh, in terms of uh, uh, early on it was below the uh, uh, the SMA 200, right now it's above the, uh, the SMA 200, okay? So Singapore Medical, uh, some key points here, there are some private specialist providers and uh, they have been uh, having some presence in Indonesia, Vietnam and Australia. And uh, like I said earlier on, um, all those people that have been um, delaying all, all, the, all, all those uh, non-essential uh, uh, operations, they have been postponing from COVID-19 year towards uh, uh, year 2020 towards uh, 2021. And therefore, that should be propping up the patients uh, going, uh, going into the uh, medical center or their hospitals. And that's why in, in a Q-on-Q in a -Q basis or year-on-year -year basis, we definitely will see uh, better in terms of uh, in terms of the patients uh, visiting visiting them, and uh, that would also uh, prop up the share price. I believe that currently it is uh, a very strong upward trending tone. Uh, it is uh, breaking above also the uh, thirty three to thirty five uh, cents level, and the next target is uh, potentially towards the forty three towards the forty seven uh, cents level uh, for Singapore Medical. So for consumer, it is under the essential segment. It's very recession proof. Uh, people will buy more in, in terms of the better protein, better um, better food for themselves and things like that. So I've selected a few companies that uh, is uh, very resilient in terms of the share price. I think they can also uh, provide some good dividends moving forward. So Shengshong is a retailer uh, in Singapore and I think some poultry stocks also can be uh, seen as one of the good investment direction as well. Okay, Not only just retailer, uh, but retailer is definitely recession proof under uh, under this COVID environment, we know that uh, they we, we can't live without food and therefore we can't live without our essential items. That's why retailers are still one of the uh, better uh, place to put them our, our money into. Okay, so um, for trading range, I think it is not as vibrant as uh, the rest of the play, uh, the rest of the sectors. But again, uh, I would uh, suggest that if you want to accumulate, you might want to think think about the uh, support zone around one five two, one five nine towards. Uh, the next resistance will be around the 172-178 level. Okay, uh, next will be Jaffa. Jaffa is related to um, some uh, beef uh, uh, and also some of the protein, uh, related to protein food, uh, and that is where they are specializing in. So dairy-related products, milk, also they are, they are, they are uh, one of the producers as well. So I think uh, essential proteins, you can look out for Jaffa. Jaffa has been quite steady. You can see since March, uh, last year, near to forty-four cents. Right now, is around eighty-two cents. I believe that uh, they can still continue to uh, turn higher because under this environment, um, you can't really go um, travel, uh, but you can only buy something that is good that you can pamper yourself. Maybe you can buy better, uh, you know, uh, beef, uh, beef steak uh, to pamper yourself and things like that. So that will translate to uh, better earnings uh, for Jaffa and. They are not really in, uh, in in Singapore only, but they are also in the various other countries. Okay, so uh, the support range is around eighty two towards eighty five point five cents. Um, the range of resistance is around ninety eight point five towards one hundred five level. Okay, Thai beverage. Yeah, sorry, I think. Louis, uh, yes. Yeah, I just have to pause you for a while because um, last week we just had the CEO of Jaffa, uh, actually oh. on our show. So okay. guys, if, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you are interested more about Jaffa. Um, okay. You can actually view the video that we have on our Facebook page last week so you can uh, know more about the business. So since you mentioned it, I just want to bring this up. Uh. <laughs> great, great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, thanks Luis. Thanks, Luis. Okay, sure. So uh, for Thai beverage, I think uh, everyone would know them uh, for their Chang beer uh, in, in, uh, in Thailand. They are the, the, they are the uh, biggest in, in Thailand and also uh, one of the leading beverage companies in the uh, Southeast Asia region. Uh, I think uh, in terms of this Thai beverage as well, uh, we can see this as a recovery play, but also a resilient play as well. Uh, because during this period of time, I think most of the people can't really go out and buy their beers, but they, they spend more money to buy one carton or two cartons to put at home. Uh, for myself, I definitely you know uh, store some at home because I can't go anywhere. So I think uh, that is also uh, one of the uh, key, uh, key idea for recovery team and also 
I, I would say that they are quite resilient, even though you are not drinking out there, but you you will also maybe perhaps drink in your, in your house. So, uh, and right now it's near towards Chinese New Year period and people would, uh, you know, uh, pinpoint towards the uh, Chinese New Year team kind of counter. So Thai beverage will be certainly suitable uh, for the current moment. Uh, and I would say that uh, the 76.5 cents to 79.5 cents is one of the good places that you can uh, monitor for a good uh, support range. And uh, 88 towards 92 cents will be the target uh, based on the previous uh, resistance. Okay, like I said earlier on in the REIT sector, uh, it is definitely a high yield sector. Uh, you're buying into something that can generate some uh, yield. And um, I think uh, their yield can be more than 3%. Uh, but uh, maybe 3% is not so uh, attractive to you. So you can you can refer back to just now the table uh, of, uh, of, of financial data and track back which one is giving better yield in terms of the REIT sector. So try to avoid maybe retail malls, although they can recover um, stronger than ever uh, in, in uh, 2021 or 2022 once the vaccine is in. Uh, but at the, as of this juncture, retail malls and commercial might you know take some uh, backseat for the, for the time being. You might want to uh, focus in warehouse, data center, high tech park, uh, and uh, as that there is a lot, a lot of demand uh, from this area, and the sector yield uh, is very high and it's worth investing. So uh, I've chosen two of them. One, uh, I think, one of it is uh, SunTech Real uh, Estate, and uh, they have uh, retail uh, and also offices. So I, I'm looking at offices as um, the the um, the uh, support for the uh, catalyst of Suntech Green and also the dividend yield estimate is 5.5%. If you look back into the financial data, even though uh, the uh, Maple and Capital DC read can give you around, I mean, they, they, they are in the high tech industrial park data center kind of uh, portfolio, but their yield is only around uh, 3 to 4%. So I would uh, go for something that has a higher yield, which is around 5.5%. So that is a very decent uh, for me. Okay. So for our logos, uh, it's certainly uh, having some uh, good warehouse logistic properties uh, in, in various parts of the world, Singapore and Australia. I think uh, this, uh, this, during this pandemic, a lot of uh, warehouse or a lot of logistic companies are making a lot of, lot of uh, strong profits, especially those uh, you know, related to uh, freight forwarding and related to tra transportation and logistic because your uh, Courier flow is much higher compared to uh, you know previous years, so uh, therefore uh, this warehousing is uh, very much in need. And uh, bear in mind, during um, this pandemic, a lot of people have shopped online. So various uh, uh, various um, packages has been coming in from various uh, places like China, you know, uh, back towards uh, Singapore, and Singapore has warehouse or Australia as well. So the online e-commerce has been supporting this warehouse logistic. Uh, properties kind of uh, invest uh, real estate investment. So I think uh, this is a very very uh, uh, prime time for for them. Uh, so that is why you can see that they have been surpassing the sixty three point five cents uh, towards the uh, area around uh, this uh, seventy cents level. Uh, but I'm expecting further upside should be seen also towards the seventy five point five and uh, seventy seven point five cents uh, level for uh, RR logos. Okay, the dividend estimate for. The next financial year is 7.3%. So that is a very, very high uh, in terms of the dividend yield. And based on the current position, it seems like a breaking up and potentially heading towards uh, another 10% of upside for uh, the from the chart perspective. Okay, uh, plantation, I think I need not to say a, a lot. Uh, they are basing on just the uh, CPO price, CPO demand has been firm. And I just want to point, uh, uh, point to you that um, over the past uh, four, three to four years period, uh, the average price for quarterly basis has been just around uh, the 2005 level. But in uh, third quarter onwards, fourth quarter onwards, it has been surpassing uh, 2005, then uh, going up higher to above 3000. Right now it's near to 3005, 3522 uh, as, of, uh, um, as of last uh, uh, Friday. So basically what I am uh, anticipating is that if they are Q on Q year on year higher based on this uh, CPO price, which means that their uh, quarterly earnings will be higher as well. So for instance, those companies that have not been announcing their results in the, uh, in the upcoming uh, quarterly result, they will be using this because fourth quarter uh, results will reflect in the February reporting season. So uh, Q on Q, the uh, CPO price has been higher by 19%. Uh, 
year on year has been higher by 73%. So that is why uh, we can expect uh, the uh, earnings will be higher as well. So it, same case goes to next quarter. If uh, first quarter 21 can sustain around 3,005, then the earnings for the next uh, next following quarter will also be very strong as well. So uh, I think for plantation counters, it is a very decent um, uh, investment based on the current position and uh, based on the ahead, uh, I mean, by, by using the FCPO prices, uh, um, crude power prices, you can already uh, foresee that their earnings are on a stronger path, okay? So I'll just uh, put out some key points here. Uh, the mature area for uh, Golden Agri is, um, is around 461.7 thousand hectares. Planted areas is near to 500,000 hectares, 92% mature area. So uh, prime uh, tree profiles are uh, 71 per 71% are prime. So which means that 71% of the trees are actually producing in a prime uh, uh, prime crop palm oil. And uh, that would actually bring up you know, uh, the, the uh, earnings moving forward. If they can actually go up to 75 or 85% in terms of the tree profiles, in terms of the prime age, then uh, we can actually expect the, uh, the earnings will be good. And then the share price would also follow in tandem as well. So share price has been stagnating uh, near towards the 14 to 16 cents over the past one and a half years period. Uh, it has been up to above the 17 cents uh, pullback towards this level. And then uh, we are anticipating the upcoming results may you know push up the share price towards 21 to 22. So uh, just trying to um, uh, position yourself ahead. And also um, this might not be just one quarter Kind of trading, they might they can uh, go on until uh, the May uh, reporting season. Okay, if the CPU prices is uh, sustaining well around three thousand five. Okay, uh, construction sector. Uh, I think domestic expand uh, the development expenditure in in the uh, domestic uh, ground should also be one of the uh, sector that that you can actually look out for because of the multiplier effect. Normally, construction will relate to you know wages, uh, higher wages in terms of the construction workers and they spend more. So multiply effect in terms of construction activities, normally $1 spend will create around $1.5 to $2 uh, in terms of the uh, uh, down the value chain. So uh, that is why I think uh, supported by uh, the support package from the uh, Singapore government is also very, uh, very good. And I think um, that could actually help uh, to at least sustain and uh, not to bleed so much in terms of uh, last year's 2020 earnings, but at least we can see some good recovery in 2021. So uh, BRC Asia uh, rebounded off the support region around the 144 to 149. So they are related to uh, manufacturers of uh, market steel, uh, the uh, mesh uh, under the BRC brand name. Uh, they are related to you know uh, building materials and also building materials to support the uh, construction activity. So if construction activities is good, normally um, the uh, building material segment will be also uh, flourishing as well. So that is how I look into that, uh, that seg this segment. So it has been supported near towards 144, 149 level. And uh, I would expect some of the um, higher position will be around 170 towards 177 uh, uh, dollar uh, moving forward, okay? Okay, this is uh, very, very interesting. The financial uh, sector, uh, strong trading interest, higher average uh, daily trading volume. Uh, stock market ha has been getting traction from the retailers. So trading velocity would well for the exchange and fund houses may be also a proxy for stock market. So um, I think Singapore exchange, everyone would know about them. So I, I need not to talk about uh, Singapore exchange. They, are being, they have been doing very, very well in, in 2020 and I would expect similar case for 2021. Um, the next one that I want to focus is, actually uh, this is just the, uh, um, the, the table that I've been showing uh, early on, on the trading value and also volume. And I want to show you on IFAS. IFAS has been, uh, getting a lot of traction since uh, just last year September, it was uh, trading around two to two fifty Singapore dollar. Right now, it's trading around five towards uh, six uh, six dollar and thirty seven uh, as of um, two days ago. So what has changed in in this is that um, they have been increasing in terms of their uh, AUA assets under administration. So towards twelve point five nine, that is uh, I think uh, an increase of maybe thirty to forty percent. Uh, compared to last uh, last financial year. And they have a platform called the Fund Super Smarts, uh, which I think everyone would know. And also they have the bonds, uh, super, uh, Bond Super Smart as well. So I think um, that has gained traction for those DIY um, retailers that they want to have a diversified view of the, the, the stock market. They can buy into funds. And 
iFunds is the platform of a fintech uh, platform that uh, provide these funds first part that uh, they can actually uh, give the DIY retailers to um, select their own funds themselves. So it's, it's like um, being your own unit trust agent. So you, you will be buying your uh, own funds instead of asking a unit trust agent to choose the fund for you. So that is why I think iFast has been gaining so much of traction and uh, they have been you know surging very strongly. So I would still assume that they uh, it is, although it is a very high in terms of risk at high all time high area, but I would also uh, assume that people that are buying at an all time high area are giving a premium to this company for a reason because they might be knowing something that we don't. So that's why I think th there is a reason for uh, the share price to go uh, so well at the, as of this juncture. But if in the case that you are not willing to pay for $6, uh, dollar, you might want to wait for a pullback towards maybe 550 range then uh, to accumulate and then to target around six, uh, 7 towards $750 dollar, uh, range. Okay. So the technology part would be electric vehicle. It's a key trend. Higher LED contents, a stronger demand in electronic gadgets under the work from home. Um, you know, everyone is working from home, so gadgets is one of the one of the uh, the the key uh, places that people has been spending their money on. Five three five G trend to be expedited. Uh, digitalization from corporates also being accelerated. So such shortages of semiconductor chips. So these are some of the uh, technology uh, catalysts, technology sector catalysts that we can actually anticipate some super cycle. To be seen uh, this year towards next year. Okay, uh, AEM related to semiconductor electronic uh, companies um, serving the computing 5G AI market. So uh, they have been recovering from the 382, 393 level. Uh, next target will be around the 435, uh, 450. So this is based on the near term uh, target. Uh, ISDN related to motion control industry, con uh, industrial computing, and some related en engineering services. Um, uh, they are they are having some good rec recovery from the sixty point five cents to sixty five cents. Uh, I would expect the uh, recent rebound to continue sustained towards eighty two towards eighty nine point five. Uh, Grand venture is also related to um, uh, this uh, semiconductor analytical uh, life sciences and electronics and other industries. So they are under the uh, technological uh, technology sector as well. So recently, um, after they have been, uh, uh, I think. Uh, IPO in, in, in Singapore exchange, they are not really so actively traded until recent part of the days. You can see volume has been scooping up by certain players and share price has been uh, 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 has been breaking out above the 46 uh, pullback and, uh, and then right now we are having some good rebound formation of uh, bullish and guffing bar. Uh, it might be uh, retesting the 58 to the 60 cents level. Uh, and the last uh, China proxy is um, the riding uh, on the recovery in China because uh, China, we are anticipating some good growth uh, in 2021, around 8.4% 8, 8 based on consensus uh, estimates. So they have been combating uh, COVID-19 in an efficient manner. So that's why uh, the recovery is, is also uh, much spectacular compared to uh, the rest of the countries. And made in China 2025 target, uh, this has been mentioned by uh, Xi Jinping. And uh, this definitely will bring more job orders uh, either to their domestic uh, companies in China, or job orders might flow out to uh, Southeast Asia region uh, towards Malaysia, Vietnam, or even Singapore. Uh, targeting self-sufficiency uh, economy, so this is uh, very um, independent of uh, China itself. So if those companies that has ventured into China, that has stationed their uh, expansion plan into China, this could be benefiting uh, those companies. So some of the companies that I, I'm going to um, uh, talk about will be related to either they are benefiting from job orders from China or they have already ventured into China and benefiting from their economic uh, recovery uh, since last year. Okay, so Nanofirm uh, provides nanotech uh, solutions uh, for advanced materials and nano products. Where are the uh, applications of all these products is related to 3D imaging, sensing, uh, planar display and 3D display, mobile phone, LiDAR, sensor, autonomous. So these are some of the key events or key application that uh, is happening right now in terms of autonomous car, in terms of LiDAR sensor uh, that is related to all these gadgets out there. So I think uh, Nanofoam is definitely uh, it's, uh, it's a very healthy company. Since um, since they have IPO uh, in uh, uh, last year, November, they have been just around 280. Right now it's near towards five uh, Singapore dollar. Okay. Uh, Sun Power is related to China. They, they are something like uh, 
okay, if you know a Malaysian company, something like SolarVest, something like uh, SciPark or something like Sandminder, they are one-stop solution for the uh, renewable energy projects. So they build, operate and transfer. They also have TOT and BOO models as well. So basically they help, um, they are in China. So uh, so that's why um, they, are listed in, uh, they are listed in Singapore and uh, their operation is in China. So if China is recovering, so if you are, if you have, uh, if you want to, uh, you know, go into China investment, but you don't want to buy into, uh, buy in China stock exchange, you can buy into uh, the Singapore exchange under this company called Sun Power. Uh, 83 cents is uh, 83 to 87 cents is the support, and the 96 towards one uh, uh, dollar is the resistance point for Sun Power. Okay, uh, I think last company for today would be Valentronics uh, Holdings, uh, that is related to. Um, some of the telecommunication industrial, commercial electronic products and uh, things like that has also a presence in Vietnam, Hong Kong, and Shenzhen. So basically, uh, this company has uh, uh, manufacturing facilities in uh, China as well. So that's why they can also benefit out of this China growth. So uh, the share price has been uh, pulling back from the uh, 67 to 70 cents uh, region back towards this 62.5 cents level and we can anticipate some recovery to happen along the way towards back towards the 67.5 or even towards 70 cents level okay so uh, i guess that will be uh, that sums up my um, session today so um, uh, just to um, yeah promote m plus online a bit uh, can i do that uh benny yep please do okay yeah so if you want to register for an uh, m plus online trading account please visit the following website and also we have uh, our Facebook page. Uh, please share and like our videos uh, moving forward. Okay, so uh, back to you, uh, Benny. All right, thank you so much, Louis. Wow, um, in this one hour, we actually get a lot of things from you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll come into the questions in a short while. Um, let me just do some announcements before we continue. So guys, if you have any questions, you can just um, type in in the comment section. Uh, thank you so much, Louis. Louis, you have, Louis, you have been uh, you have been talking nonstop since the beginning. Um, yes. <laughs> so I'm just gonna make a few announcements, and if you have any questions, we have probably about another 10, 15 minutes more. You know, this is your chance to ask Louis questions. Um, so just get ready. I'll just make an announcement, and I'll get, I'll take a look at your questions. All right. Um, what I want to share with you guys is basically we uh, in Singapore they're actually having a. Uh, trading festival right which is going to be held on the 27th of february and of course this is online uh, all you need to do is to go and scan the tag and of course this will be on the presentation slide uh, we'll give you the link on the comment section sorry uh, it's bit.ly slash trading festival 2021 um, you know, on the 27th February is when they're going to have the summit. This is where you're going to learn. I'm going to share with you some of the people who's going to be speaking in that event. And then from the 1st or 5th of March, you're going to have a trading competition okay, where you have a stand, uh, you have, you can stand a chance to actually win up to 5,000 Singapore dollars. All right. So for details, please go to bit.ly slash trading festival 2021. Okay, so we have quite a number of interesting speakers and of course our own uh, Elvin Wong uh, from Equity Striker will also be part of uh, one of the speakers there. And um, the other interesting speaker that I can see here is uh, Jack Schrager who actually written a book, uh, many books actually called Market Wizards, right? So if you want to know about trading uh, and, and how, how these traders are successful, then it's, it's good to actually go there and ask questions and definitely I'll be there. All right, uh, uh, to in this trading summit because I find it's quite interesting and it's been quite some time actually before we have any trading or investing conference. So I guess uh, this will be um, since it's just the beginning of the year, it will be a good time to actually visit uh, this trading summit. Right, so 27 February and of course there, there's a simulated trading challenge on the 1st to 5th of March. Right, so just go to bit.ly slash trading festival 2021. Um, to get more info, all right. Now, today's slides, if you want to download or whatever that um, Louis has been presenting, uh, just go to you just have to WhatsApp us. Okay, this is a WhatsApp number um, because WhatsApp us at 603 8408 2070. Now, my colleague will put the details on the trader summit and also the number for today's presentation slides, so you can just click on it 
Uh, and once you get into the WhatsApp, just follow the instructions to download today's slides. Uh, and also last week's uh, presentation slides uh, from Jabfa, um, it will be there, it will be on this WhatsApp um, uh, number as well. So just WhatsApp us and then follow the instructions and you should be able to download those slides, all right? Uh, for those who are interested to trade in Singapore markets or start investing in Singapore markets, these are the number of brokers that are available um, where you can open an account here in Malaysia and, of course, trade in Singapore markets. So if you don't want to go there, uh, we have the first two from Poems and Tiger Brokers. They are basically uh, online brokers, so you can open an account online. Uh, the rest of the other brokers, you can actually uh, find those representatives to open an account to trade in the Singapore market. All right, so these are the details. Um, Again, you can just take a screenshot or just, um, you know, do the uh, QR scanner to get those information. Now, lastly, um, SGX also has a website where you can download basically or get more resources about the Singapore markets. They have investor resources, analyst research in there, and also SGX Invest. They also have an app. All you need to do, all you need to do is just to go to SGX website. Um, and, there, and from there, you have tons of information on the Singapore market. And if you are interested in investing in the Singapore market, this would be a good resource uh, to look for, all right? And for those uh, who are interested to go further and get more information as well, we also have an online group or Facebook group. Okay, it's called ET Online Campus SGX. Okay, and this is also where we discuss anything about the Singapore market, all right? So it's ET Online Campus SGX. All right, so now um, I'm just going to basically take a look at the questions. Um, okay, we have okay, we have quite a number of uh, questions from Lily. <laughs> uh, Louis, do you see any correlation in the sector behavior uh, in Singapore vis-a-vis -vis Malaysian market? Do they behave uh, similarly? I think um, they behave quite similar in uh, in terms of the trading of sectors. I I've gone through uh, over the past month. I've gone through uh, the the list of stocks in uh, Singapore Exchange. I find uh, those that are high flying stocks are related to you know either gloves or tech counters or consumer sectors. So these are also quite similar to uh, Malaysia stocks. But I think one one sector that uh, in in Singapore can recover much faster could be the uh, aviation and also tourism sector because uh, once the vaccine has been um, you know, uh, you know, created uh, in in the population by around sixty to eighty percent. Then initiating of travel bubbles would be very easy, and that would benefit the aviation sectors. So, uh, so I I, I believe that um, uh, it has a very high co correlation. You can actually use your method in in Malaysia and invest in uh, Singapore. Uh, I think there are also actually actually Singapore is better in terms of the reads. Uh, if you know that they are in data centers and they are high, they have they are having high uh, this uh, call by, uh, uh, dividend yields. Uh, that is also a benefic beneficiary of uh, uh, investing in the Singapore exchange. Yeah, yeah. Like I think risk is quite interesting because they are, like you said, they're most of them the high tech industrial sector, uh, which yeah. I think Malaysia risk don't really have that yet. They have industrial, but not really high tech data centers and all that, right? Yes, correct. Uh, in Malaysia, you have malls. The most is malls, uh, offices, um, warehouse. You have only one or two. And uh, yeah, industrial, but not the high tech park. Yeah. So I guess there are there are, there. Are, I, mean, I mean, it could be belong in the same sector, but I mean, if you are investing in Singapore market, it gives you more options, lah. Like uh, you know, even the semicon, uh, all semicon serve into different sectors as well in the IT in the technology world. But and then Singapore will have its own uh, unique or uh, uh, or niche market for that particular technology, lah. Right. So it gives you a more uh, bigger options, lah. Yeah, I think uh, I, I saw some questions uh, relate, uh, talking about the nano firm. Is there any similar uh, companies that is in Malaysia? I, I don't think there is a, a, a apple to apple comparison company. Mm. But since they are dealing with coating, and what I can think of coating companies in Malaysia or related to coating, uh, cleaning of coating or uh, equipments is Frontcan. That is the only uh, company that I, I can, uh, you know, I can uh, relate to. But in terms of what I've checked uh, just now uh, on nano firm uh, peers comparison, most of them are actually in the overseas, like in Japan, in uh, in the US and things like that. So in Malaysia, we don't have that uh, niche market. So yeah, like Benny have mentioned, 
in uh, in Malaysia, we have uh, some of the technology counters that you can invest in. But some of the counters, like Nano Firm, is not really uh, found in Malaysia. You can actually uh, you know spend some time to look into this counter. Uh, people have been saying this counter has been an, a unicorn in uh in in Singapore. So I guess um, you know based on the share price from two something towards four five uh Singapore dollar, it uh, it tells you something. So I guess uh, Nano Firm is worth uh, looking at. Uh, you know, have a look in, into this company. Yeah. Mm. Okay, based on your, I mean, again, this this is your opinion because everybody is asking about rub, rubber glove steel is the hot thing right now, right? Um, do do you do you see the ASP or the average selling price for rubber gloves to go back to pre COVID levels? Uh? because you know pre COVID the margins for glove companies are pretty much like ten to fifteen percent depending on companies, right? Um, but now their their margins are like almost fifty percent, and some of them even more than fifty percent, and because of the average selling price. So that's why the question is. Um, you know whether the average selling price can hold, but of course now it's very high. But do you yeah. think they will go back to pre-COVID levels once you know we have more people getting vaccinated? Um, it, I, I think I have to ask the magic ball, uh, magic eight ball, you know, <laughs> <laughs> my crystal ball. But because we can't really uh, f- find one thing, one the the first variable is they started to have an increase, exponential increase in ASP when COVID started, but we don't know when it would be ending. So uh, if you ask me. Um, when they, okay, the timing of the ASP decline, I am not too sure. But will it will it go back to the pre-COVID level? I I don't think so. You know, uh, based on uh, the past experience of the past ten years, ASP has been going up. Just that it has been going up maybe one two cents, one two cents. Right now, it's one dollar, two dollar. Mm. Okay, so so uh, it might go back to uh you know um the 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 pace uh, uh the pace might might. Uh, the increase of ASP might not be as great as right now, but I don't think it will go back to maybe pre-COVID levels. Uh, uh, if, if you over the years, it has been increasing. La, that's why you're yeah, saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, I mean, I, I cannot really pinpoint to when it will, it will, it will fall. <laughs> and also, I cannot, I, I'm not too sure how is the demand. As long as COVID cases is still rising, I think the demand is still there. ASP will be elevated at least. Uh, if uh, currently, if, if you measure right now, it's 100, maybe 100 US dollar. Last time is 20. So maybe it can go back to 30 or 40 or 50. We, we are not too sure what is the uh, market equilibrium uh, for now. So uh, I think uh, it is very hard to uh, say whether it, it will go back to uh, before that. But my my guess is that it will not go back to pre-COVID level. Yeah. Yeah, because there's, not, there's also a chart where you see most of the uh, developing nations, or in fact, most of the countries, uh, per capita usage of uh, rubber glove is still very small as compared to the de- developed nations, right? Correct. And I think because because of this COVID-19, it basically provides this awareness lah, how important mm-hmm. rubber gloves are. Yes, yes. So that I think find it quite, quite interesting as well. Yes. Uh, and right. I, I think especially if uh, right now, uh, if... China is such a huge population, or even India is such a huge population. Just by increasing, you know, two or three per, uh, pair of gloves per capita is uh, how many billions of gloves needed. So, I, although there is a lot of demand, you know, being uh, being put up uh, during this uh, one year period, I think um, uh, a lot of uh, factories have, have been set up in China in, in various part of the world. Uh, I think uh, that will also contribute to uh, flattening down the ASP moving forward. But we don't know whether it will flatten down to what levels. Is, is it a pre-COVID level or is it the middle part of the COVID level? So we, we, we wouldn't know uh, on that uh, Yeah, quantum. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think one, one of the other things that most of the investors are looking for is also turn around, right? Like you mentioned, um, you know, the uh, tourism industry, you know, we're talking about airlines and all that, even, uh, even retail markets. Uh, um, mm-hmm. Of course, it's, it's still quite rosy. It's, it's still quite um, um, not that bullish right now. We still see, I mean, shopping centers and all that still quite empty. People mm-hmm. are the borders are still closed. Um, but if those who want to find turnarounds, um, do you reckon how long will it take before you can really see some turnaround? Okay, uh, I would pinpoint to a few uh, uh, portion here. Uh, first thing, you have to look for COVID nineteen cases to decline. I think below hundred k or. 50k per day then secondly is to look out for vaccine uh, uh, vaccination uh, stats tracker if the population uh, the whole world population is hitting uh, 20% or 25% or th- near to 30% of the uh, population being uh, vaccinated then you can expect the uh, green uh, green zone to be more and more in the future and then that would 
uh, bring up the uh, next topic will be the travel bubbles being initiated and then upliftment of the travel borders. So these are stages. So I think uh, when they say that, you know, vaccine has been uh, very act, uh, effective, uh, first of all, then you can start to see the recovery in terms of the airlines share or even tourism share. Then once it is being uplift, uplifted, then the share price would get up. Then it will pull back and then recover again. So I think that will be the trend that I'm anticipating right now. So a few chronological uh, chronological orders of things to happen. First of all, is vaccine. Uh, first of all, is COVID nineteen cases to come down. Secondly, is the uh, vaccination uh, to vaccine more than uh, uh, thirty or forty percent. That would be an uh, infection point of things to happen. Uh, to to the next uh, point would be the um uh the what do you call that the travel borders being uh being uplifted. Yeah. Mm. But because the prices are so attractive right now, right? Um, mm -hmm. So should we think that investors should, you know, just try to start to accumulate right now? And if they have the holding power, let's say, in the next two years or three years, do you think it's uh, wise to uh, look at it now? Instead of waiting, you know, sometimes, you know, when the data improves, the share prices will go up, you know, much faster. And yeah. uh, if, if a person who has, let's say, a, a, you know, a two-year holding period, do you think the prices are attractive right now? If you are having a more than uh, more than two years or two years period, I think it's sufficient, quite sufficient to say that in twenty twenty two we we are going to expect everyone to be vaccinated or maybe near to fifty percent. So travel bubbles will be initiated, and uh, right now will be the time to buy into it. But you have to select those uh, companies that are worth buying into because some uh, smaller ones might you know wind up uh, uh, down the road and they have to, don't have enough cash and they have to ask for rights issue and they will dilute your earnings. And these are not the things that you want. So uh, I think um, uh, for SIA or even SATS, I think they are quite a uh, very strong name around. So I think it's worthwhile to you know hang on there for another two years. If you are loving this uh, recovery team, I think um, SIT, SATS and SIA would be uh, perfectly all right to you know uh, venture into. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's also a few more questions coming in here. We have uh, Brandon Su is asking. Uh, most of your stock ideas are at all-time highs. You know, some of them have pulled back. Uh, any comments on the current valuations? I think uh, valuation-wise, uh, I will not put so much uh, effort on it because uh, in 2020 or even 2021, people are already putting their money into a very rich environment. So we don't know when the bubble is going to burst. Uh, okay, I'm not to say that the uh, market will going to crash soon because they, they are still earnings. So people are just... You know, um, uh, expecting the growth at least at least those stocks that have uh, growth in it, they are still willing to put their money into. So that's why they are the, the share prices has been going up higher and higher. So I think valuations wise, uh, it's a really an unknown factor because everyone is pumping their money into this stock market. So it is hitting all time high. But again, if there is another buyer is going to will, uh, is willing to buy at a higher price. The share price will also go up. So I think Benny knows uh, a lot about technical analysis. <laughs> you agree with me that when when a uh, trend is right, you ride the trend until it ends. I, mm. I I'm pretty sure that uh, this would be the case for uh, 2021 as well because uh, retailers that has went into stock market last year, they have knowledge of it. They would know when to cut loss. They would know when to enter. So the trading liquidity is there, and therefore it, it should you know uh, continue to uh, uh, search higher if. There is uh, an, an, another buyer buying into the counter. Yeah, that mm. is my view on, on, on this all time high uh, perspective and also current valuation. I mean, although valuations um, can be very expensive, same goes to uh, in, 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 in the US, uh, Tesla is very expensive, but it still goes higher. So uh, there is no ending to it if there is another buyer to it. Okay. Yeah, so I guess you have to get yourself educated. You gotta have get more knowledge on how to actually track the trends or you know look at fundamentals of companies. Uh, yeah. that at least you know what you're doing, lah. Like. The worst thing is you know you do not know what you're doing, right? Because chasing prices is also not easy and uh, it's quite risky as well. Yes, correct, correct. Yeah. All right. Uh, thanks for your question, Brandon. Okay. Um. Maybe we only have time for one more question. I'm sure they. You know, you actually already have a fan. <laughs> a few fans actually. Uh, one of them is Kinboon. Kinboon is asking, can we trade SGX with by or from Malacca Securities or M Plus? Uh, yes, uh, we, we can, but uh, it is not uh, online uh, putting in your orders, but you have to call in. Uh, it, it is an offline orders. Uh, at this moment, we only have that, uh, but you can definitely trade through us, uh, M Plus. So uh, go 
uh, to our website just now i've put it in uh later on uh benny will, uh, benny and team will share out the slides uh at the last two pages uh, of the slides uh, there is uh, a place to register uh, an m plus online account trading account and from there you can contact our colleague and our colleague will guide you through how to uh, place an order for sgx yeah okay awesome all right well okay. um louis thank you so much for spending almost like nearly two hours right now it's already 9 40 pm yeah um, thank you so much thank you so much yeah we'll definitely be a more delighted that you're able to join us in our future session as well so uh keep in touch can, can, uh, no we do hope yeah. you can come and speak maybe maybe to the malaysian audience malaysian market uh you know since we are yes, talking yes, about yes. right now so yeah. thank you so much louis um for your time and thank you everyone for joining us i wish you all the best and have a good evening have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.